All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I'm delighted to be joined by Anne Hill, who is in Colorado. How are you doing, Anne? Hi. And Anne uh, runs Hilltop Virtual Solutions, and she wants to help you get control back of your business, uh, the back control of the back end of your business again. <laughs> That's a mouthful. <laughs> but uh, as we all know, like the back end is something that, uh, you know, sometimes gets away from us a little bit, particularly if you're a small business or an entrepreneur. So, um, so what we're going to talk about today is how you can identify what's working and not working in your business. Um, so let's get straight into it. And uh, when you work with the, when you work or you engage with a business, how do you do a diagnostic on what's working and what's not working? Yeah, so a lot of times when I first start with a business, I will walk through kind of a strategic planning session with them and we'll really dive into more of the business as a whole. And then we start looking at um, some of the areas that I classify more on that back end on that operations side of things. Um, but I break down business is really into any all any and all businesses into kind of these six main pillars. Um, you'd have the financial steadiness, um, visibility, um, looking at product development, that sort of stuff, looking at operations, team growth, and looking at the customer client experience. And with each of those areas, you can have things that are working and not working in business. Um, so we'll go through um, some questions in each of those areas and look at um, really a reflection and an analysis of um, areas that that are working tend to um, not stick out as much as the areas that are not working. A lot of times people right. get get hung up on what's not working um, because it's just that frustrating and pain point and that challenging part in their business. So um, so we'll you know we'll we'll go through some questions. We'll look at things you know as a business owner myself, and then also working with mm -hmm. business owners. It the financial steadiness tends to be one of those big areas that people look at, but right. there's so much that goes into it. Um, you know, if your sales sure. process isn't working, that impacts your finances. If your um, the product you're trying to sell isn't working, that goes into your finances. So, you know, it all kind of wraps up into the financial side. Um, but we want to look at each of these areas separately first and right. see um, what areas they feel are, are working smoothly and what areas are not working smoothly. So when you do the when you do the overview at the beginning, are there some things that often jump out at you from that even before you do a deep dive? I would say that um, the whatever the people typically come to me for on that operation side is usually the first thing that, that jumps out. Um, people want to have a red carpet experience for their clients, but yeah. that, that journey, that customer journey that they want to take the client through, um, typically doesn't consistently happen. Um, it may happen with some of their clients and customers, but not consistently. So, um, I'd say that's probably the, the underlying aspect of it is, is we do a little bit of what we want to do, but we're not consistently doing it with all of our clients, all of our customers, all of our team members. So. Yeah, I, th I think that's a great point because, I mean, customer experience, I think sometimes people overlook the fact that our customer experience is the totality of our experience, not the individual. Like I can have a great maybe pre-sales experience, maybe a great sales experience, but then maybe not such a great onboarding or implementation experience or. Uh, maybe I don't have a great experience at the beginning. Things get better, but there's always that residue or uh, of, of negativity there. So I think yeah. sometimes people don't understand that it's the totality that matters and the consistency that you just mentioned. Yeah. And then also looking at um, the offboarding experience as well, whether it's a service provider and it truly is like you've wrapped up that service or even if it's a product and, you know, they've received the product. And is there any sort of follow up after that that you do? Um, it's always going to be an easier process in business to keep good clients that you have versus trying to find new clients. It's always easier to, you know, let them be your, your referral and let them be the people that are telling others about you and your product and that sort of stuff. So, yeah, I know that's, I like the offboarding is a, is a great point because, um, I think sometimes it, it, and if you do project-based work or you deliver a service and whatever, um, there is a point when you may you know leave or whatever and the 
The problem is then the customer sometimes feels a little bit abandoned or feels a little bit vulnerable or now I'm on my own here and now I've got to justify that I you know, purchased this product or service in the first place. I think that's overlooked a lot, uh, yeah. that piece. Yeah, I definitely would agree with that. And, and exactly like you said, that all of these different pillars, they all are intertwined, but there are aspects of them that you can kind of pull out little pieces of it. Um, that can make a big difference. It doesn't always have to be this huge undertaking. It can be a mm -hmm. small tweak that can make a big impact in the grand scheme of your business. Yeah, and and let's face it. I mean, we're we're now finally. I think people have woken up to digital transformation. I think uh, yeah that uh, you know pre pandemic, some people were you know some people were doing it. Some people were talking about it. It's a lot of lip service being paid to being paid to it. I think the pandemic really brought it home to a lot of people and businesses that digital transformation is absolutely critical. Uh, so where do you, have you seen this? Are you seeing people waking up to automation, to digital transformation, to fine tuning and making their businesses, especially the back end of their businesses, much more efficient? Yeah, I definitely see people. Um, well, and especially they'll get, they'll grow, they'll to a certain point, but then they will feel like they're just getting stuck. And um, no matter what they try to do on their own, they're just getting stuck in a certain point and not moving past that next threshold. Um, what I find a lot of times is that's when more of that back end of the business becomes a little more apparent that it needs to be addressed and it needs to be looked at. Um, and so we start diving into the operations, diving into the processes, diving into the consistency that we're working on. And, um, and then from there, they start to make that that next jump and, and really moving their business forward. And the, the idea of people working in the online space, um, it, well, businesses alone being in the online space is one thing, but even some you know local businesses that I've worked with here, they are much more open to that virtual working environment than, than there ever used to be um, you know, a couple of years back, so. Yeah, absolutely. And I do think that's the future of work. It's going to be hybrid in many ways um, for a variety of reasons. But I just want to touch on something that you mentioned a moment ago, and that's processes. And I think that's where a lot of people fall down. Like, you know, they may have their back end technologies, they may have their systems, uh, but they start backwards. They get the systems and then they try to build the processes instead of like making sure that they have fine tuned their processes and understood and defined their processes and then and then leverage the technology to support those processes. Yeah, hands down. I fully agree that it's very important to to really know what you want your process to be, know that it works when you're doing it in all honesty in a more manual way before looking at, at what the technologies and the automations allow. Um, it's it's hard to make tweaks to an automation if you don't know the process actually works in and of itself first. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. yeah, as I would say, I mean, if you have a crappy process and you automate it, you mean all you have is an automated crappy process. Yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> yeah, you've just made the crappiness more efficient, I guess. Um, <laughs> Uh, but uh, but the other thing too is I think again going back to that holistic view I think sometimes um, and you probably experience that like people will want to focus on one back end system um, and forget about how it interacts with the other systems and with other departments. Yeah, it definitely I do see that where you know people especially in business we we figure certain things that we look at and go okay this is the problem but that may not truly be the underlying root cause of what the ultimate problem is. And so um, even though we do want to break things down into the ability to move one, you know, one step at a time, mm -hmm. we still do need to understand how it is all intertwined and how it all relates um, and really look, what I do is I try to take people through that foundational part first and then start to move up and build up from there. But there it's really breaking everything down to that foundational level of the basics of business and then starting to build in a more efficient any, and structured way. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Are there any common things that you're starting to see now that are not working in businesses or that businesses are waking up to? Because I do think there's a, a kind of collective awakening and maybe the pandemic has um, made people look at things a little bit closer than they they did before are there things that you're seeing that are not working in businesses that maybe people are waking up to for the first time 
Well, businesses, at least the local businesses that I had here, um, the idea of needing to still have an online presence um, was something that they didn't necessarily focus on as much in the past. And they very much do realize the importance of having an updated and current website and having um, a, a social media presence even if it's not like a huge priority, they still want to every now be now and then be known that they, you know, do have a Facebook page or they do have a profile on, on a social media platform that they can. Um, so if somebody does, you know, do a little bit of digging on the back end and, and want to look at their business and see, they can see, yeah, this actually is a business and yeah, they still are operating. They're not out of mm. business. They're still a, a current business. Um, in at least for the local space, that's what I've seen, um, in the online space, I think even more than ever, people have wanted to have that human interaction. Still, they want to know that they're talking to a person and they want to know a little bit about the person and not necessarily just go through a whole automated process. Um, which there are elements in business that, especially when we look at efficiencies and operations, that there are automations that that really can save people a lot of time as the business owner. Um, but we still do want to remember um, that we are working with people. We are working with human beings. And there is an element that you do want to incorporate that, that human interaction to. Yeah, no, I, I totally agree. Because I think one of the things that has, uh, has, I think it started before the pandemic. I really do believe that people were getting, people were craving more and more real connection and authenticity uh, and all of that and, and human to human connection and maybe we've gone a bit wild on technology and it's and especially a lot of you know large companies had made it almost impossible to ever interact with a human being right <laughs> um, I think people were already getting kind of tired of that I think the pandemic just completely like accelerated that where people because of the isolation all over people okay if I'm going to interact with the business I want to interact with at some stage, I want to interact with people, I want to get to know them, I want to see that they're authentic, I want to have some kind of connection to this. Yeah, yeah, definitely agree with that. Yeah. So how do you when you when you talk to businesses, how do you help them balance that technology versus people equation? It's really looking at um, different levels of what is being done. So, uh, you know, each, each business in some ways operates the same, in some ways operates differently. But I think there is an element of kind of working through some of the, for, for instance, on a sales process, you might look at a process and say, well, there's some qualifying things that we can put in place here to know, is this an ideal customer? Is it not an ideal customer? Um, but then when you get to that point of, is this an ideal customer? Then maybe at that point, that's when it's, okay, let's actually get to know the person a little bit more and have some of that interaction versus trying to take somebody all the way through a process without um, ever having a conversation with them. So, yeah. And you touched on something, uh, again, something I think that's fundamental too, is the, you know, the ideal customer, because I think, um, and especially coming out of the, of the pandemic and all of that now, I think more than ever, people have to get their target customer right have to revisit what is my target customer have to be disciplined about it because uh i mean other, otherwise you you know you're, you're going to go astray on everything you do but how often when you work with companies do you still find that they have maybe not a totally well-defined idea of who their target customer is more more often than not um it's mm -hmm. that is one of the first things that i do really try to to work through too is um looking ultimately where i come from the the side that it, or angle that i come from with it is more of the um the mission excuse me the mission and the um, values of the business and i find those two things tend to really help dive into more of who that target audience is and who uh, who their ideal customer is in their business um I definitely see people that are needing to potentially revamp their mission a little bit more in their business. Um, some of it is, is still there, but definitely over the last couple of years, there have been tweaks, there have been pivots in building in businesses and, and needing to go back and, you know, look at that again, it's important to do um, every so often, even if there wasn't a pandemic, I think it's still an mm -hmm. important thing to do um, looking back at it and, and reviewing it and making sure that it's still in alignment with who you are and what your business is doing as you've grown. 
Yeah, and, and then obviously there's the sales process as well. It's making sure that you understand uh, not just your target buyer, but how your buyers are buying or want to buy. Because yeah. we have obviously, obviously we've seen a lot of changes in that. In, in I mean, we were seeing a lot of changes in that anyway. We've seen a ton of changes, um, you know, during the pandemic. And, and I think it's obviously important that people revisit their, their sales process as well. Yeah, yeah, I definitely agree with that. Yeah. And, and with your, with the, the businesses you work with, um, how have they, how have they managed to sort of stay focused and maybe optimistic at a time when, you know, there's so many variables and and out there that they have no control over? They really have honed in on what their ultimate um, mission is for their business. In all honesty, it's looking at what, what are we here for and why are we doing what we're doing? Um, they're looking at it, really, I guess it's a combination of their mission and their values and, and honing in on that um, and standing true to it um, through all of it, because the more they they really make it known what they stand for, the more um, they attract their ideal and their target audience. Yeah. And I think that's another great point there, because I do think, again, the way the world is today or how people are, are feeling today, I think they really look to businesses that they work with they want to believe in them you know so Mm -hmm. they want to believe that that what they say is true they want to see that they act you know that they actually act it out uh and so i think that piece is is probably becoming more important than ever right now yeah and it's it's important for the business owner to know that and feel strong in it but it's also important for them to um emphasize that with their team and as they grow their team to make sure that those team members are also buying into that same value that same um, goal and that same purpose for the business. Yeah, which obviously means uh, you have to recruit not just to the to the skill set, you have to recruit to the culture fit too. Oh, without a doubt. I think that's even more important is to recruit to the culture fit. I, I really feel like a lot of things can be trained in, in people when it comes to specific skill sets. But, um, you know, that on the job training is is something mm-hmm. that can be done. But that um that value side of it and that culture fit is you either have it or you don't <laughs> so yeah, yeah. that's a harder thing to train somebody in <laughs> and obviously that that totally impacts then the customer experience because if you have one person one or two people who aren't a fit for the culture they can undermine everything oh without a doubt yeah yeah. Well, listen, Anne, this has been fantastic. All of Anne's information is going to be below this video. But before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about yourself and what you do. Yeah. So um, as I mentioned here, I work with businesses on the operations side. We look at um, really diving into what is not working in a business and helping a business be a little bit more operational, um, operationally efficient. Um, one of the big things that I, I really like to do with businesses is this, the strategic roadmap where we really dive into it and then look over, you know, a year, um, what the goals are in the business and then even breaking it down even more to really help the business owner know what needs to be done when it needs to be done and, and really clarify how they can move their business in the right direction. So, um, so yeah. (laughs) <laughs> Great. Thank you. Well, listen, thank you for joining us today. Thank you for sharing all those insights. Uh, my name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine, Pipeliner CRM, and I will see you all again soon. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks.